Hey guys, I'm Dr. Nhorshik, and today I'm gonna show you how to fix a hip shift like that whenever you squat. Get up and get down, get up and get down. Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by the YouTube channel. Today is all about fixing a hip shift whenever you squat. I'm gonna show you two simple movements that you can do to fix a hip shift whenever you're squatting. And then I'm also gonna show you a case study at the very end of this video with one of my patients and exactly what we did to help fix the hip shift in his squat. So first things first, a majority of hip shifts, specifically on the way down, are due to a mobility imbalance at your hips. Here's a very simple screen you can do at home to help uncover that problem. What I'm gonna do is lay down on the ground. This is gonna be called a Faber test, which stands for flexion, abduction, and external rotation. From here, with your foot on the top of your knee, you're gonna lay on your back, you're gonna put your hands right here on your pelvis. You're gonna let this hip just relax as much as possible without your pelvis tipping up. So from right here, just relax, keep your pelvis level. You can see that this side, I've got a couple inches before I hit the ground. Now what we're looking for is that you have even hips. I'm gonna do my right side. Don't let the pelvis hit the ground. You can see that my right side is a little bit higher. This is actually something that I have dealt with in the past. You can see my right hip is not as low as my one on the other side. So this means that I have a problem with my right hip extending and externally rotating, which is a reason for me shifting to the right side because I cannot extend and externally rotate this right hip as much as possible. So if you have a problem in the Faber test side to side and one hip cannot drop as low, what you're gonna do is the assisted hip airplane and open your hip to try to gain that range of motion. Here's what you're gonna do. You're going to grab the barbell. You can, if you're doing this at home, just grab a countertop, uh, the side of the chair, anything like that. You're gonna get into your single leg RDL position. Now from here, you're going to open your hips as far as you can. Try to take your pelvis and point it towards the wall. Belly button towards the wall, feel a really good stretch. It's gonna come out more so in your hip joint. It's not gonna feel as much muscular as it will deep inside your hip joint. And then you're just gonna come back to neutral. So the bar in front is for balance. From here, as far open as you can. Again, in this position, I'd go with about a five to a 10 second hold, really trying to crank open as far as you can. And again, you can do this in different levels of hip flexion. So start up high, but then go lower. See what brings out the most stretch deep inside that joint. Something like this, you're gonna wanna do maybe five to 10 repetitions on that side that does not drop as far to the ground with the Faber test. So that's just a couple of those right now. Now, as with every single mobility exercise that you do, we need to test, do the exercise, and then retest to see if we're efficient and effective with the exercise selection that we've chosen. So let's drop back down to the ground, see if we were able to make any change. So from right here, pelvis level, drop down. You can already see with those, I'm already a little bit better. That's showing me that that exercise was helpful at clearing up or at least helping in decreasing the amount of restriction that I have in this hip right here. So now that we have cleared up a mobility restriction, we're going to work on overlaying some good quality movement and stability between the hips. Just grab your slingshot hip circle or any type of hip circle band that you have, small resistance band loop. You're gonna put this around your knees. Now from right here, I want you to get into your normal squat stance. You're gonna grip the ground with your feet you're gonna drive your knees out to the side. Now, not so much so that your foot rolls on its side, but enough to where you feel your lateral hips turning on. From here, we're creating that external rotation torque. We're gonna to slowly descend into a squat, and we're gonna perform holds every couple inches. So we're gonna squat down and hold. And what you're feeling for is whether or not those glutes are turning on symmetrically on each side. Do you feel your left one turning on like crazy, right one sort of asleep? You're gonna pause in that position. Try to really drive your foot hard on the ground, knee out to the side, get that glute to turn on. Most of the time, you'll see an imbalance side to side with someone who has a hip shift. And you're just gonna take that down and every so often, pause. Now, if you're doing this correctly, your hips are gonna be on fire. But work on symmetry from here, shift a little side to side, feel like you're right in the center. Having someone video you can also give you some good feedback whether or not you're doing this correctly. But take it all the way down and then back up. Work on staying symmetrical. I like doing one and one half squats. So down, 
half step up, squeeze my glutes, drive my knees out to the side, and then back down. Something like that, maybe doing 10 reps or so. You should be very fatigued in your hips symmetrically afterwards. So that is the way in which most people are gonna clear up their hip shifts. You're gonna see a mobility issue with the Faber test and unable to extend and externally rotate on one hip, usually the hip that you are shifting towards. You're gonna clear that up with the assisted hip airplane, opening that hip up, holding for a couple seconds. Once you clear up your mobility, you're then going to do some stability movement re-education to get yourself to move symmetrically. Now, that is the start. It can be a little bit more complex with some people, but that's a very good way to work on that. Here's a case study with a patient that came to me out here in St. Louis and how he was able to find a full fix with his hip shift. Chuck came to see me for physical therapy with a pretty significant hip shift to the right associated with some low back pain and left glute pain. We started with a mobility screen called the Faber test. With his hip in a figure four position, I allowed his leg to slowly drop to the table. You can see his left leg drops almost a full fist and an extended thumb from the table. However, when performing the same test on his right side, you can see his thigh is unable to drop nearly as far, meaning his hip joint is unable to extend and externally rotate on the right as much as the left. I had him start by performing the assisted hip airplane with the barbell out in front, working on opening up his right hip as far as possible for a few seconds before then closing it for a light stretch. After 10 times we retested and as you can see, he saw huge improvements in his ability for the right hip to open up compared to the before. Now that his mobility was cleared up, we assessed his hip coordination with the single leg bridge test. When bringing up his right side, he felt his glutes working hard. However, when performing the same movement on his left, he felt his hamstrings and quads, not his glutes. We started by performing the single leg bridge hip thruster with his back on a bench, two sets of 10 for a five second hold, driving his foot into the ground hard and trying to squeeze his glute as much as possible. I also had him perform unassisted hip airplanes on his right and left sides. He told me that he felt much stronger on his right, and as you can see, it's a little bit more shaky getting into his left side. He felt more unstable on his left leg stance. All of these tests and movement evaluations exposed that his hip shift to the right was due to a mobility restriction in the right hip that limited his ability to externally rotate symmetrically, as well as a hip stability and coordination deficit on the left side. After working on all of these weak links, we then got a barbell on his back and worked on slow tempo squats. And as you can see, he's showing great progress with this light weight. Here's a before and after, again, to show you the difference in his squats. Great work, Chuck. All right, guys, so that is it for today's YouTube video. Thank you so much for checking it out. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content that I'm continuing to put out here on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube. Uh, like, comment, share with all your friends. If you have any questions or things you'd like me to cover in upcoming videos, please comment below. Uh, I try to respond to as many people as possible. Um, until next week, guys, happy squatting. They say that. Energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching? So caught up in their egos, these people have.